Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. Today's video is going to be about an experiment known as gravimetric analysis. When we talk about the phrase gravi, it means mass and metric means measurement. So here we will be talking about, we will be measuring the changes in masses of substances. Imagine you have a sample of hydrated salt. You have a sample of hydrated iron to sulfate for example. It's green in color. For example, I'm writing it is hydrated iron to sulfate FeSO4 dot XH2O. The XH2O will be talked about really soon. Hydrated means the crystals are here with their ions in the ionic lattice but there are water molecules attached to the ionic lattice. A hydrated salt has water of crystallization water of crystallization attached to it. So basically in the ionic lattice you have the water of crystallization. This water of crystallization can be removed by heating and then we can see how much loss of water has happened. Which apparatus do we need? So first we will need a tripod stand where we are going to put our sample. Next we need a crucible. A crucible is made up of ceramic so we need a ceramic crucible where we will be heating our sample. Then we need a clay pipe triangle. A clay pipe triangle is going to be placed on the top of the tripod stand where we will fix our crucible. And last, obviously we need an electronic mass balance because electronic mass balance has a higher level of accuracy. So we need electronic mass balance. In step one what do we do is we put the empty crucible along with the lid to measure its mass. We weigh empty crucible and we record its mass. So make sure this is the first thing we will do. For example, the mass of the empty crucible turned out to be 50.63. We will keep a record of that. So 50.63 gram means the empty crucible. In step number two, we remove the lid basically and we add our sample in the crucible. So we transfer the hydrated sample which was FeSO4.XH2O inside the empty crucible. Obviously the mass has increased by now. We have no idea how much mass was added. So in step number three, what do we do? In step number three, we put the filled crucible on the mass balance again. Measure the mass of crucible containing the hydrated sample containing, sorry I had written the wrong spelling, containing the hydrated sample. So obviously the mass is expected to increase now and imagine the mass turned out to be 53.91 grams. Let's make a table at the bottom to see what we are measuring. First the mass of empty crucible was measured slash grams which was 50.63 grams. Then when we measured the crucible along with the sample, mass of crucible plus the sample slash grams, it turned out to be 53.91, which means obviously we can find how much sample was added. So the mass of sample slash grams is going to be 53.91 minus 50.63 so 3.28 grams. Now we put the clay pipe triangle on top of my tripod stand. When we put it on top of tripod stand we make sure that it is placed in certain way that we have ample space for placing the crucible. It begins to look like the flag of an illegitimate nation by the way. 
anyway coming back so in step number four we set the clay triangle on top of the tripod stand and when we do that we place the crucible which had the sample in it we place the crucible on it and we start the flame we start the heater so when we put the flame on obviously we are expecting the water of crystallization to heat and it is going to escape so in step number five allow the water to basically like vaporize during this process and then it obviously escapes so allow the water of crystallization to vaporize and escape the crucible you should be aware of the fact that solid might decompose but we'll talk about it so in the next step we allow the crucible to cool and then we measure its mass again after heating reweigh the crucible because we we want to know how much water has lost during this process so that's why i'm writing it in all caps now it's called residue we don't call it the sample anymore because the sample has basically lost its water of crystallization the chemical identity has changed so we will write mass of crucible because we are obviously measuring it all in the crucible plus residue don't call it the hydrated iron sulfate or the sample anymore it's called the residue we obviously put slash grams and then the mass turned out to be 52.54 grams you can see the mass has decreased because some water has lost how much water has been lost during this heating process so we will make the final column which is mass of water lost slash grams notice that before heating the mass was 53.91 and after it became 52.54 before heating the water was within the sample so water wasn't lost but after heating after the loss it turned out to be lesser so we'll subtract 52.54 from 53.91 and it turned out to be 1.37 grams that is the mass of water lost in the next step what do we do is in step 7 we calculate the moles and value of x let me show how we do it we find the moles of the anhydrous iron sulfate and we find the moles of water the moles of feso4 is equals to the mass of residue divided by the mr and the moles of water is equals to the mass of water lost divided by the mr the feso4 mass was 52.54 minus 50.63 because that was the empty crucible residue mass divided by the mr and on the side of water we will put 1.37 because that was the amount of water loss divided by 18 the mass of residue turned out to be 1.91 and then we find the mr so iron ar plus sulfur's AR and four times oxygen's AR turned out to be 151.8 gram per mole. We will find the moles of the anhydrous residue which turned out to be 0 0.0126 mole. Don't forget to write your values up to three significant figures. And for moles of water, we use the mass of water lost. It turned out to be 0 0.0761 mole water. Now we know that FeSO4 residue and water had a relationship of 1 is 2x. If 0 0.0126 represents 1 mole, then 0 0.0761 mole will represent x. We take 
their simple ratio to find whole number values. It turned out to be 1 is to 6.04. So this is almost 6. So our value for x is equals to 6. And the correct formula for the FeSO4 Correct formula for the hydrated sample turned out to be FeSO4 dot 6H2O. So it means it was iron 2 sulfate hexahydrated. I hope you are clear with the experiment. So in the next video, we'll do an actual past paper. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks.